ndugu mheshimiwa rais wa jamhuri ya Kenya mheshimiwa huru mwigai Kenyatta mama Margaret mheshimiwa William Ruto mama Rachel and when Sally spoke here I know her to be very exact so people may have wondered because she recognized mama Ngina Kenyatta as the, the form of uh, first lady mama pia tutakutambua ombolezaji wenzangu yangu mimi naweza kuwa marefu sana lakini ninaomba tu ruhusa nitaje mawili matatu your excellency i think we need to move from morning zemoi and i agree with you that you chose yesterday not to mourn but to celebrate an iconic leader a great father of this nation who has lifted us from all corners of the republic to be leaders and so in celebrating his life a fellow like me as mzee kebaki would like to say a fellow like me coming from sekuru where by the way we have a big invasion of the locusts <laughs> who has no reason absolutely no reason but to thank god for the life of mzee huyu mzee kweli baba yetu i lost my father about a year and a half ago in 2018 and because he couldn't attend uh, my father's funeral he dispatched brother gideon and did refer to the family and it was not enough that he sent gideon with his message but he organized that i come and he received me like a royalty i remember we ate goat <laughs> there was no dr silverstein around that day and uh, it was great and the things that he told us i'm sure brother gideon who always remember in fact when we last tried to touch base he told me don't talk mzee alisema and so the great family of mzee you know we consider you part of our life you allowed uh, brother raymond as now the leader in the family you allowed him there to serve all of us and as i think somebody said i think my brother speaker like caparo hamkuwa na chuki sema you guys we've you've taken our, our dad you allowed him to serve this country let me just say in terms of regional integration and and that's why i said uh, mr president that we need to move from morning now to really carry forward mzee's legacy and i know that you are determined look at regional integration when mzee moi asked me along with now prime minister rugunda of uganda ndugu kikweta had not even become uh, foreign minister those regasira uh, who was uh, nominated by mzee mwinyi to jump start the east african community we did not spare any effort and within no time mzee was so determined after he had patched up even with his brother uh, yoweri kaguta museveni who recognized him as mzee and that recognition is what shaped the route now to arusha the capital of the region i think your excellency the beautiful anthem ya east africa jumuiya yetu in order to remember mzee and really actualize his vision we need to move to that federal state this is what i see as something that is doable and because i've had time to discuss with the his excellency president uhuru in some detail even where we feel there are some people a little sluggish you can move the community integration with our brothers in south sudan and you have helped tremendously our brothers in the democratic republic of the congo eastern congo relies mainly on imports through the port of mombasa i just want to remind us of mzee's other vision that of seeing whether mombasa could be another singapore in the region indeed as his foreign minister i traveled with him he went for benchmarking in singapore he believed then that mombasa could be a free port Your Excellency even without referring to you recently I've really reinvigorated this dream 
because there are people already saying our port of Mombasa is dying because of standard railway gauge, and yet it is possible to convert Mombasa to a free port and all the business, whatever else together is under railway gauge, moving forward, we'll be able to create a Dubai in this country. Your Excellency, this is the way I think we can also move. You know, Igat, you heard from your brother, President Gule, yesterday, that Mzemoe really was a pillar of a revitalized Igat. When we remove the double D, because it used to be for drought desertification, and development. But we removed one thing about drought. I think we should now go back to the basics because I remember I chaired the Ministerial Commission Committee in Djibouti which amended the eager charter. And now it is development. I've given a lot of priority to peace and security arrangements within Iga. And I think that's why you have asked me to assist our brothers in South Sudan. I'm sure you met your brother, President Salva Kir. You know the urgency of the situation all a progression of what General Lazaro Sombayo and ourselves try to do, to do for people of Sudan. There's work to be done. We can accomplish this. The signing of the Comprehensive Peace Agreement in Nairobi and Mzee Kibaki, and now actualizing the nation state of South Sudan. This is work that is easily under your tutelage, Your Excellency. You can do that in great remembrance and memory of Mzee uh, Daniel Toriti Charap Moy. All what uh, General Lazara Sumbeyo and my sister Sally say, I really associated, associate myself with a lot of that. In fact, I was going to ask Sally, because she gave a detailed, very important documentation on how to run a government as head of civil service, particularly where there will be no leakages of government secrets, and Amzemoy, that could not be tolerated. I wanted to ask my sister Sally to convert that document, as memory of Mze, to a small booklet which I think should go to the Kenya School of Government so that people can know, can know how to assist in ensuring that we move our country forward. Therefore, Igad, Your Excellency, I think we should now go back to the basics because this locust invasion has become terrible. It's even crossing over to Tanzania, and I know you're doing the best you can. Maybe we revitalize, go back to desert lo locust control organization which is actually based in, in Addis Ababa and headed by a Kenyan by the name of Dr. Stephen Joker, strengthen this locust thing because your country has a bumper crop this time. And just imagine the devastation this is going to do. Again, under eager, which Mze Moy worked so hard for. Allow me then to conclude my remarks because time, clearly, I'm sure the military would want to take over from us. And just say, that Mze at the personal level really mentored us. I remember at a Chogam conference uh, in, uh, in, in, in the country next to, um, to Australia. We were there in 1995 when Ken Sarawewa died in, in Nigeria. Mandela insisted that uh, Nigeria be kicked out, Sunny Abacha. Um, and, then, and then, of course, that we were there with Mze as a leader of delegation, tremendous leader. He would always, as leader of delegation, write some special notes to me, some of which I value. I remember, well, in, uh, in, uh, in, in New Zealand, he told me, Stephen, when troubles come, they don't come singly. <laughs> that was in response to a crisis we were handling uh, that time. And then, People remember this continent, uh, the late Muammar Gaddafi. Muammar Gaddafi was, had styled himself as the, the uh, brother leader. And a lot of countries, Mr. President, could not afford sending delegation to AU summits, including to Sirte or to Addis Ababa. So what President uh, Gaddafi used to do was to hire you know, aircraft for countries, whole countries. Now, Mze Moy looked at them at a plenary session in Addis. He looked at all those who had, had their planes hired for them, and he wrote to me, he said, Stephen, <laughs> he who pays the piper calls a tune. Mze was very poetic. He was brilliant. And he therefore, when we sing an, in our national anthem, Kenya is Tahili Heshma. That's a very important thing. He stood for the dignity and the honor of this country. Mzee could never sell the birth rate of Kenyans to any leader, 
anywhere in the world. And I think that's what we need to do, to build this capacity. And I know that it's going to be well. My brothers have talked about the removal of Article 2A, and I thank my friend Ole Caparo because he knows we conspired with him as organizing Secretary of Kano. I knew whom to use to be able to convince him. Say. And that's what we did. And Article 2A was repealed. And sometimes, you know what Salah said, you quarrel with your colleagues, Mze will call you both. I'm sure my sister will forgive me for saying this. Once or twice, we are difficult to use Sally. And Mze will call me and say, what is going on <laughs> between the two of you? And of course, we ended up making a wonderful team. In terms, that time when I served with my sister Sally and General Sumbewo, the country's uh, profile in conflict resolution and management went beyond uh, what actually was happening in the region. So we thank you. And sincerely, may Mze rest in everlasting life. And the family, you know, we are part of you. Keep together. Keep together, my brothers and sisters. Don't allow anything, legacy of Mze, because it is becoming traditional, Your Excellency, these days for people to say, oh, okay, hapa na pale, whatever the issues, I'm actually, like General Sumbeyo, an arbitrator. And the, that is not necessary in this family. Knowing you, knowing you, Brother Raymond, Brother Gideon, Brother Philip, all our wonderful sisters, and I, I know that Jennifer will get her leg also properly in place. We love you and we stand with you. God bless you.